Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In this tutorial, we will discuss some of the strategies you might use to mask salaries for your HI reporting. HI reporting obviously is a very sensitive topic. And for this tutorial, I wanted to pick a, an interesting scenario. So our scenario is the following. Uh, we have a multi-level reporting hierarchy. And uh, what we're doing in our organization, we review the salaries of people who report two levels below than people who are in the room right now. So for example, I am a CEO and I have my direct reports in my room. In our case, it would be, I am the John CEO here. And then I have Sarah who is a VP of HR and I also have Tim who is a CFO. Those two people report directly to me. And now I have them in my room and we're trying to discuss salaries of the organization. What I do not want to happen is I don't want people who report directly to me to see each other's salaries. Conversely, if I'm Sarah, and Sarah has two direct reports, Kate and Nancy, who are managers, and then Kate and Nancy have their own employees. So when Sarah has Kate and Nancy in a room and we talk about the analysts' salaries uh, for the HR, we do not want to show Kate and Nancy's salaries at the same time because they could be in the room at the same time and we don't want them to see each other's salaries. So let's see this masking in action. So if I select CEO, so this filter here is a proxy for me logging in. So Instead of me logging in and logging out and kind of making this video longer than it's supposed to be, I could just pick a manager on this list and then that will assume that I'm logged in as that person. So right now I logged in as a CEO and looking at this reporting hierarchy here it says view only just so that it's easy for us to keep track of who reports to whom. I see that Sarah and team reports to John. And what I want to do is I want to mask this salary. In our case, masking means I'm just going to display, display an asterisk. So this is exactly what we see here. We see the entire company. It's a small company, obviously, but Sarah and Tim report to me. And as long as I'm logged in as a CEO, those two salaries are masked. So if I do have them in the room at the same time, they can look at the salaries of the whole organization. And I'm not gonna show my salary, nor am I gonna show the salary of Sarah and Tim. Now, if I decide to log in as Sarah, so I'm gonna pick Sarah from the list now, you see that Sarah has two reports to direct reports, Kate and Nancy. So Kate and Nancy's salaries are masked and Sarah can still see everybody else in her department. If I log in into look if I log in as Tim, then Tim has two direct reports, Cameron and Jack. And then you can see that Jack and Cameron both have their salaries masked. So if I'm sitting down with my direct reports, so in a room right now there is me, Tim's the CFO, I have Jack and Cameron, and we're looking at all of our analysts in the department, then we don't have to make this meeting very awkward. They cannot see each other's salaries. We could just focus on salaries of their direct reports. You might be asking yourself, well, why do I even bother masking it? Why don't I just exclude their salaries altogether? Well, imagine a situation where I do want to see the entire total for the whole department. I just don't want to see the details. So if I were to add a total to this list, the total would still roll up correctly. I just would not be able to see the individual salaries at the detail level. Before we jump into the calculation, let's take a look at the data set. And as usual, I will make the Power BI desktop file and the data set available in the blog post. Please look at the link in the description of this video. So here we have a pretty standard layout for the HR type of data set. We have an employee ID in the first column. In the second column, we have manager ID, and then we have some details for the employee. So we have John is the CEO, we have his salary and the level. Let's take a look at some of the enhancements that I made to make this data set easier to work with. The first thing that I did was I added a path column and I'm using a path command to create a reporting hierarchy for every employee in my organization. And the way the path command works is it creates the reporting hierarchy separating by, by a pipe character. So here for John, John does not have a manager, so his path is one, just his ID. Sarah reports into him, reports into John. So Sarah's ID is two, her manager ID is one, so the path will be one pipe two. If we look at Nancy, Nancy reports to Sarah, who reports to John. So it's three reports to two reports to one, and that string looks like one pipe two pipe three. And that command will do the same thing for all of the levels in the organization. If you look into my path, you will see that the deepest that this path goes is four levels deep. Therefore, I can create a reporting hierarchy and I'm calling it level one, level two, level three, level four. And for each level, I will extract the name and position of the person who lives in that level. So let me explain. So level one, 
which is the very top person in our hierarchy, will always be our CEO, John. And let's take a look at the code that I used to create that level. I wrote the code in such a way that I can reuse a lot of it for all four levels in my hierarchy. And therefore, the first variable that I do is I'm trying to figure out what level I am in. So uh, what the level ID is or the ID of the person in the first um, at the first position in my path. So in this variable, we're going to write the value of the path at the position that's specified in the third in the second parameter. So for every row in our hierarchy, we're going to look at the very first position in our path. And then we're going to find who the manager is and what the position of that manager is. And then we're going to concatenate what one with the other to get a good description of that level. So that's how we get our John CEO here in level one. Level two looks very similar. What we're doing is now we're looking at the second position in our path, looking up the manager and the position. We're going to concatenate them and uh, put together the, the value for the level. The only thing we're doing here is that if the manager is blank, and the manager would be blank, for example, only when the path only contains one position. So for CEO, there's nothing at level two. So we're just going to repeat CEO for all four levels. So you will see the John CEO, uh, John, John, John for all four levels. And the reason we're doing it, I will explain it to you later. Basically, it's just a cosmetic re reason to make our hierarchical slicer work better. So let's take a look at, at this calculation in a little bit more detail. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our path and say, pick out the ID that sits in the second position. And that ID will live in this variable. Then we're going to look into entire table. And the reason we're going to do into entire table uh, is explained here. We're saying filter all salaries, where the employee ID is whatever that ID is in that position. And once we look up that record, we're just going to return the employee name. Then we're going to do the same thing to return the employee position. And then we're going to concatenate one with the other. And that's going to give me things like Sarah, VP of HR, Nancy, HR manager, and so forth. Just makes it a little bit more easier to understand because if I had given you a list of names, it'd be hard to track who reports to whom and what the positions are. And now we're going to do the very same thing for level three and level four. And at level four, we're done because we looked at our path and we saw that at the longest, our path extends up to four positions. And now you can see I'm displaying uh, that data here in a hierarchy slicer. And you can see my John, the CEO at the top, and I can collapse that down. I see that the two people who report to John are Sarah and Tim, and I could drill into each of them individually and see all of the reporting people who report to them. And the reason this thing works very nicely and does not repeat things for all of the levels is one of the uh, options in the slicer is this really nice option here, hide members. And what it does is if my, as I create the hierarchy, if my parent name is the same as the member name, it'll just not repeat it twice. And that's why we don't see John, for example, repeat a bunch of times because John for level one is the same as John level two, just level three, therefore it's just being hidden. We just see it the first time at the very top of the hierarchy. So it's a really handy control. It's called hierarchical slicer. You can download from app source or you could go to store.office.com, download it. It's really handy control that uh, very commonly used in any kind of hierarchical analysis. So now in this control here, it says view only. I only created it for you guys so that it's easier for you to track because it's hard to remember who reports to, him, to whom. So hopefully this will make it a little bit easier to, to, to follow. Now that we went through the setup that I used to create our data, let's take a look at how our calculation works. Oh, and one more thing. In order to make this easier to work, I had to create this slicer to emulate people who are logging in into the, into the report. So in order to create the slicer, I created a table called managers, which is a filter of all of the employees that have direct reports. I didn't want to have all of the employees on that list, just the employees who have direct reports, so we have a shorter list. So the code here is very simple. We just create a temp table that is a filter of all of the salaries, uh, records that have direct reports, and we just return the columns that I need to create that filter. So you can see when a user makes a selection from that filter, um, in the corresponding table, we have employee, employee ID, and the level four. Level four just has the name and the title, so it's easier for us to remember who is who. So here I just show level four, which tells me that John is a CEO, 
team of the CFO and so forth. And now we can finally take a look at our calculation. So we're creating a measure called masked salary and we're going to be doing a lot of pre-calculations pre to make the final calculation to be very sim simple. So the first thing that we need to know is who is the current manager ID? So whoever logged in into our report or whoever we have selected in our slicer on the left. So that's a very simple piece of code, selected value manager employee ID. Then we're saying, who is the current employee ID? So in our matrix or table control, when we list all of our employees, we're gonna use the same selected value function to know who the current employee is. The most important thing here is, we also need to know the path, because what we need to know, we have a bit of a problem. Um, we need to know two things, whether this employee and the manager live in the same branch of the reporting hierarchy and whether the manager is the manager of that employee, right? Because we're going to list all of the employees and we have to be very careful to only show employees who are below me in the org chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our path attribute and we're going to cache it in this variable and why you will see in just a few minutes. So now we're going to implement two more variables that really are the heart of this calculation. Variable number one is can see employee. So that means when I log in and I'm a manager, I'm going to only see employees that are below me in my departmental hierarchical structure. So let's see how I accomplish this goal. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether me and the employee live in the same branch of the reporting hierarchy. So basically I want to make sure that my ID and the employee ID live in the same path. So because I already cached the path for the current employee, I just need to make sure that my manager ID is somewhere on that string. And that's what this selection here will check for me first. The problem is if I just had this function here, path contains, I couldn't answer the most important question. Does this employee work for me? Or, does this, or do I work for that employee? So somehow I need to figure out who works for whom. And that is accomplished in the following command here. So let's see how this thing works. We're gonna be using our search command. And search command is gonna look up me, my ID, in the path and figure out at what position I'm there. So obviously, the more senior the person is, the earlier that ID will be in the path. It's gonna take a smaller position number. And because the path is a string, we're able to use our string functions to this sort of analysis. The problem we have is that the manager ID in our case is integer. Therefore, before I do my search, I need to convert it into a string. So that's what's accomplished in this function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ID, so assuming I'm the person who logged in or whoever I picked on that slicer. So I'm gonna convert my ID into a string and I'm gonna look where my ID lives in the employee path. So if I'm John, then I'm going to be the very first ID that this function will search. It'll, it'll return one. If I'm somebody else, then it's going to return another number. But if uh, the other thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing for the employee, right? And because both of them we already know live in the same path contains, then uh, unless the manager and employee live in the same path, you wouldn't have gotten even to this comparison point. So now that I'm I already know that both manager and employee live in the same path, or one of them reports to the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what is the position where I live or manager lives in the path, and then what's the position that employee lives in this path. And if employee works for me, his number is going to be bigger or her number than my number. And if I work for the employee, then my number will be bigger than the employee's number. So for me to know that I can see this employee, my number, the search, search returns the position at which it finds that string, will for sure be smaller than this position. Therefore, when this command is executed, if can see employee is true, I know that whoever is on that list, I will be able to see. The other thing that it will do, it, it'll filter out me. So if I'm John, if I'm the CEO, I shouldn't even be on the list. People should not need to see people who they report to. So now I know all the people who are in my reporting chain, who um, are reporting directly to me or my direct reports and so forth. The next question that I need to know is whether the people uh, that, or the employee that we're looking at right now is a direct report. 
So remember what we said, we said that I can only see people who are in my reporting hierarchy below me, but if it's a direct report, I need to mask his or her salary. And that's what this return statement does. The first thing we're gonna check is whether I can see that employee. And if yes, I just need to check whether it's a direct report or not. If it is a direct report, I will display an asterisk instead of salary. And if it's not a direct report, I will just show the selected value for the salary for this employee. And now let's just make sure that this function works as expected. So we already did a little bit of that uh, in the beginning of the video, but let's just do this again to make sure. So I've logged in as John, so I select John in my slicer. John has two direct reports. It's Sarah and Tim. So I will be able to see all of the employees and you don't see John on this list because uh, nobody needs to see my salary, right? So if I'm looking at the, at the company, then I see, okay, Sarah and Tim, their salaries are masked and I can see everybody else's salary. If now I select Sarah, and Sarah, I could see has Kate and Nancy who work for her, then Kate and Nancy's salaries are masked and she can see, and as Sarah, Kate and Nancy get together in the room and talk about salaries, Kate and Nancy don't need to worry, their salaries are masked and they can just talk about all of the analysts who work for them or whoever else, however ever deep in hierarchy that hierarchy goes. That's about it for today. You can download this desktop file in the link posted in the description of this video. Thank you for stopping by and I'm looking forward to see you come back soon.